Hello everyone and it's very nice to be with you in the forest of the imagination. Um, I'm talking to you from where I live in the southwest in Devon and um, I'm going to be talking to you about various works I've made to do with rivers and then inviting you to make your own work potentially if you want to take up that invitation. Um, so I have a phrase that I've worked into various images and thoughts about this idea that some rivers flow through you. You don't just walk beside them, but they flow through you. And uh, this was something that I found finally kind of understood fully when I was traveling in New Zealand a couple of years ago at the invitation of a Maori community that lives on the south of the North Island who are facing various kind of environmental and climate crisis challenges. And they invited a group of creatives um, to come live on their land with them um, and explore various kind of ecological bits of thinking. Um, and it, it was a bit, a really important encounter for me because I also got to meet a group of Maori activists that had been campaigning for many years to um, have their river, the river that flows through their story and their narrative, um, given the same sort of rights as a human would have. So this, this river is a member of the family. It's part of their ancestry. And this is the Fanganui River. There's an image of um, it to share here. And this is the spot where I first saw it. And this is the spot where I actually got into it. But it was just a really kind of uh, profound encounter that made sense of a lot of the way I think about rivers, that rivers do have a voice. They do have a narrative that contains many stories within it. Water is the great kind of dissolve or solvent in the landscape. It's also the sculptor. It forms the landscapes that we see and we um, are in, whether that's huge kind of glacial action, carving big valleys or tidal erosions and estuaries and deltas, or just that simple kind of collection of everything that ends up in the river. So I'm gonna show you a few works that I've made that relate to water um, or use water actually. Uh, and one of them is called Meadow, which is a piece of work that I worked on many moons ago now uh, that was produced by the wonderful Michael Penny, who's sadly no longer with us, never would have happened without him. Um, but he asked me to come up with an idea for a piece of sculpture that somehow made a connection between Bath and London. And I came back and said, well, can I move a meadow from Bath to London via the inland waterway system? And he said, yes, neither of us knew how possible this was gonna be, but the work did take place. Um, over the month of June, um, we traveled very slowly, uh, lifting the meadow from the agricultural college in, Lackham, um, which was grown specially with using these sort of trays that were then lifted and put onto the meadow. And we traveled initially through meadows. So all through the Vale of Pusey um, and then up on the um, Kennet and Avon Canal and then onto the Thames, then into the canal systems of London that were the waterways that were local to me at the time. And as uh, this work traveled, um, it was asking a question I have, which is, as you move through landscape, does it move through you? What, what's the exchange as we move and pass through a place? And Meadow was my way of looking at that question. Um, not long after making Meadow, I went traveling myself, um, went to South America with my partner and our then eight year old, very patient son. Um, and I, during that time, I was invited to make a commission proposal for the Charles Darwin Bicentenary. Um, and I proposed tree, which is taking a 200 year old oak tree, same age as Darwin, and taking a thin slice through that oak tree. So reducing this huge, vast three dimensional object 
to a 2D drawing of itself. And when I look at tree now, I think of it very much as, as a kind of delta system or another kind of waterway. And that's the work that's permanently installed in the Natural History Museum in London. Um, about 12 years ago, I made a big decision in my personal life to no longer live in a city. I've lived in many cities, lo loved them around the world, but I now live very rurally in a sort of semi derelict mill building. So water is very much part of my kind of personal landscape. I fall asleep to the sound of a very small river. Um, and it's a line of connection as much as the telephone or the internet or the little road that comes past where I live. And that sense of being quite close to the source of a small river and how it connects to a bigger river and then out to the sea is something that's framed several pieces of work for me. Um, in 2012, I made a work for Jupiter Artland, which is a collection of artworks in the landscape um, just outside Edinburgh. Uh, the work's called Rivers, and I travelled around the mainland of the UK collecting river water from 100 different rivers to bring them into confluence with each other. And they're housed within a boathouse that I made um, that sits over water. So you view the work um, while standing over water and the, the light inside the boathouse is light that's bounced off of water. I then went on to make a big sister work to this called All the Seas, where I wanted to gather water from all the world's seas to one place. And I made that with the Fruit Market Gallery in Edinburgh. Uh, producing a work that was only possible through the generosity of a network of global seawater collectors that sent, um, sent seawater from all over the world to add to this collection that was presented in a show at the Fruit Market Gallery. At the same time, I was making another kind of collection of drawings that all relate to water and our liquid self and drawing as a mechanism of exploration. And that was contained within um, a publication called Drawing Water. Other works I've made that look at the surface of water uh, include a series of um, drawings and works on ceramic uh, that I call my sea marks. So they're, they're not necessarily pictures of the sea, but they're um, a mark that I make to try and represent the movement and energy of water. Um, recently, I've taken this um, into ceramic to produce drinking water fountains. Um, you know, it's a small gesture towards reducing the use of single use plastic water bottles. So this is a drinking water fountain uh, commissioned by, by Design Exhibition Scotland, um, where you can fill up your drinking water bottle. And that's gone into the government art collection at Admiralty House in London. And I'm making a new one as well for the Fruit Market Gallery when it reopens this summer. Um, I've made various publications relating to rivers. The first um, one was a commission from Tideway who are putting in the new super sewer in London because um, London has outgrown the capacity of the existing sewage works. So the Thames is being used as part of the city's flush, uh, which is not a sustainable environmental position at all. But many rivers take on this role um, and uh, have done for centuries, <laughs> but it's, it's, not, it's not acceptable. You know, it's not, uh, if you think of the city as a huge living organism, uh, it's a place that has to also kind of deal with its waste one way or another. Um, but I was artist in residence on the River Thames for a year at their invitation. And I chose to make a newspaper that told some of the river's stories and I appointed the River Thames as the editor of this newspaper. So it's written in her voice, this older woman and various things she remembered, high tides and low tides. So really wonderful moments of music and song and celebration, as well as really difficult moments of pollution or um, you know, tragedy in the river. 
And this newspaper was handed out to people crossing the river um, at low tide on the autumn equinox in 2015. There were 40 of us stationed along the river, um, passing out some free artwork to people. Um, I'm going to talk about another newspaper and another river, uh, this time the River Tweed, which forms um, at parts of its journey, um, the border between England and Scotland. And I was thinking a lot about the fragility of that union in our current kind of political situation and how rivers become boundaries, both kind of political and social boundaries but also kind of psychological boundaries um, places within ourselves that we don't want to cross so um, I walked the river from where it rises uh, not not far from Moffat in, in the borders um, and uh, all the way to the mouth which is which uh, the mouth is just below the other side of Berwick on, on Tweed um, there are various crossings, some are a plank in a field um, that just cross the very little kind of stream where the river rises, the headwaters, and some are very grand and impressive bits of engineering with stone. Um, and the mouth is a beautiful kind of dynamic estuary. So I collected water from the source and made a work where that source water is in a test tube within a larger vessel that houses water from the mouth. And then I made a, a one print newspaper, which was handwritten and hand drawn, and that was shown in the exhibition. I did want to do it as a print run, but I needed funding from um, either Northumbria water or Scottish water. And because the river goes into both territories, neither wanted to fund the print run, um, which was an interesting kind of example of how this river has, has conflict running through it. Um, and my newspaper told a tortured love story uh, between um, England and Scotland, which doesn't end well. And I chose the form of a border ballad, which is a very old kind of folk song um, form that's typical of that border um, region uh, as kind of giving me my, um, my voice. That was the voice that I heard in that river. So I'm gonna go on now and give you a prompt for um, a river that's closer to home. So um, the, the drawing prompt is called Avon Avon because the word Avon means river. So this is a river that's called River River, which I think is, is very beautiful just, just to start with, the idea that you call a river the river. Um, so as I've said, I believe that each river has its own narrative and voice that speaks of the places it runs through. Water is a connecting element in the landscape, running from one place to another, that sculpts and forms and holds the stories of where it runs through. Water is life. We build our enclosures, villages, towns, transport networks, industries and cities around rivers. The lines of connection, the movement of people, good, songs, stories and dreams. Following a river and listening to its voice means you follow many of the stories of a place. Avon. The river is named with a word that means river. Its name is River River. The River Avon is 75 miles long, but doesn't travel very far. Instead, it winds its way slowly through Gloucestershire, Wiltshire, Somerset and Bristol. I'd invite you to take some journeying along a stretch of the river or even journey from source to mouth to get better acquainted with it. Take a sketchbook or even better, make a sketchbook to accompany you along the river. The areas most familiar would be as it enters the city 
uh, as it comes into Bath, travels through past mills and meadows, Pontney Bridge being the point where navigation begins, past museums, parks, stations, car parks and supermarkets, past Dutch Island and then leaves the city beyond factories, Locksbrook and flows back to meadows. Look to the way the river adds to the story of the city, environmental, social, economic use of the river, and then look for other stories and narratives that follow along the river. What are the ecological systems of the riverscape? Human, non-human, beyond human, all live along the river. Can you draw what you hear? What are the river's soundscapes? How do they change at different places? How does the river connect the infrastructure of the city? Is it the city's flush? Does it move things anymore? How is the river ignored? Or how is the river celebrated? How do you cross the river? Why does walking beside water make us feel better? The river flows like time, like a lifetime. A river has its own voice and narrative flowing through it from its source or headwaters to its mouth. Can you visualize your own story or narrative in the form of a river? Perhaps you can weave your own story into the river's story. So I hope very much that you find some time to think about that invitation and possibly follow the river. Thank you.